everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Biters, the podcast for The Walking Dead, brought to you by Southgate Media Group. I am one of your hosts, Jeff Marsick, comic book writer and screenwriter. And I am Kirk Manley, your other co-host, and I am an illustrator and co-creator with Jeff uh, on the comic Z Girl and the Four Tigers. Uh, this week, this week's episode, well, I, I forgot to see what number, what number are we on? Five? Third, this was third episode, what, you mean episode? Yeah, uh, yeah. Of the show? That of was the, episode of this 13. part of the season. Oh, of the season, uh, yeah, I think this is five. This is episode 13. Okay, so we've got season. three more after this. So this one yep. was, this one was titled Alone, um, and uh, yeah, so we what were the what were the numbers? So the numbers this week. So it, this was an interesting week. So the past couple of weeks we've had, you know, Walking Dead was up against the Olympics for three weeks, and uh, then last week was the Academy Awards. Uh, so this week well, there was an interesting face-off. It was Walking Dead, a show about uh, people dying and being brought back to life, versus a show on ABC, I believe, <laughs> about people dead coming back to life. That's right. Um, resurrection. Resurrection. Which we DVR, but I have not yet watched. Have you watched it? I have not either. Yeah. Um, I actually forgot the DVR and I want to check it out. You know what else it was on? was Cosmos, the, the uh, reboot the, of yep. the famous Carl Sagan one with uh, my uh, demigod. Yes, my demigod, Neil deGrasse Tyson, my lord and savior. Most people, uh, yeah, most people uh, have sports heroes. That's right. Uh, maybe total, actors, actresses. No, total not nerd. Kirk. Kirk, uh, Kirk nerds out with uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. That's right. Um, so uh, Resurrection actually won the night with total viewers at 13.3 million. Wow. Uh, versus The Walking Dead's 12.7. But Walking Dead owned the demo, the, the that critical demo that they always try to get, 18 to 49. Uh, Walking Dead had eight million versus only three point six in the demo for Resurrection. Interesting. So Walking Dead did twelve point seven million viewers this week, which is a slight bump up from last week where they had twelve point six, and then uh, Cosmos uh, had eight and a half million viewers. Wow. Nobody's so, nobody's into science. <laughs> too much other stuff. It's a, yeah, nights it's a tough much, night, man. I mean, yeah, much other stuff. You know that that the the numbers were great. ABC was happy about uh, uh, resurrection because they needed that. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean that's that's a crowded night. A lot of a lot of good stuff on. Yep. But it's still, I mean, you know, for them to continue to crank at at around twelve is fantastic. Plus, it, it's on ten different channels. Cosmos is right. Okay. So uh, I, I don't know. It's not all original. It's on all the Fox channels. So it's it's not all. Excuse me, on all original. So, like, if it's on, what's on Fox is also going to be on Fox News Channel, right? Uh, uh, or is it, are they separate brand new episodes that are on all of those? Because that's a lot of channels to keep track of. I have no idea. It was on, I believe it was on our Channel 5. Right, so it was on Fox. Right. But, but it's on all the Fox channels, so it's on, like, 10 of them. So I don't think it's original. So my point is, is that if you, if you missed it on Sunday, no bigs, you could probably catch it in a rerun you know, somewhere on another. Fox I'm embarrassed. Right? I'm embarrassed to admit I have not. I did not DVR it, and I didn't watch it yet. I have it sitting here on my screen. Right, they have a, a feed now. You can watch it online. So okay. I'm going to watch it later today. But uh, uh, I'm, I've been disrespecting my demigod. So hopefully he doesn't. <laughs> hopefully he doesn't find out and strike me down. <laughs> I finished Lost, by the way. Oh yeah. Yeah, we, the family finished it. I, I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, I think I probably loved it so much because I went in with certain expectations, having heard and all of the battle about what people liked and didn't like about it and everything else. And and uh, uh, but I knew so much, so little about you know the the actual detail of each season and everything. So uh, it was it was awesome. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, there was only a couple of of uh, bad episodes, in my opinion, out of the entire six uh, six seasons, which is. Um, pretty good testimony i mean there was one season probably the third season was the weakest of the six but um you know overall i was just it was just and it blows my mind how much they set so many trends that we don't even people don't even i think we talked about this before they don't go back and give credit to that to that series you know but the flashbacks and the flash forwards and the um you know the way that they they wrote that uh just um 
you know, we've seen it played out and in some ways better usage of it, you know, which is bound to happen as people, you know, try to take and improve on something. But, you know, with the Breaking Bad, you saw, I saw a lot of, a lot of that style, you know, in Breaking Bad. Right. But uh, so anyway, that was cool. And I've now finished, um, not that anybody cares about this, but um, I finished the first season of Why- The Wire. Yeah. And I'm on uh, the second episode of the second season. Great series, fantastic series. But I was disappointed compared to what everybody was like. This is the best TV ever in the history of TV. And if you haven't watched this, and you know, drop everything else and watch this. And, and it is good. It's really good. But it's pretty straightforward in terms of, of what it is. You know, I mean, it's a procedural cop show. I think what makes it so captivating, and I am definitely hooked, you know, and I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm enjoying it, um, is its authenticity. You know, the fact that you, you, you feel like these are real people talking to each other in a real way and having the kind of, you know, um, the story just unfolds in a very authentic way, I think. Um, there's nothing, um, uh, it's just very, very real. I don't know. What was your, I know you've seen it, right? Oh, I, I, I watch it every year. I go oh, yeah, you rewatch it. Seasons. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, for me, it's the best show that's ever been on TV. Oh, well, so. then you and Lenny are in agreement. Well, our, our, our friend of ours, Lenny, has also said the same thing. In his mind, it's the best thing ever. Um, I will say it's great. It's really good. But um, I guess maybe I'm just not a big procedural cop show person, you know. Um, I don't watch it in any other way. So, th- But I, I do like this, and I am watching it. And, you know, it's... Uh, it's pretty funny too. It's got some great, great humor in it too. Well, procedural cuts it short because it, it, it gives it a short shrift because, uh, you know, a, a procedural is basically a show that's pretty much, it, it gets wrapped up inside of, you know, an episode or within, you know, a, a, a season. You're going to see here that just because, you, you know, the focus for each season is in a different part of Baltimore and what got started in the beginning doesn't, it, it's not wrapped up. And it, it, you know, it evolves and it becomes right. something else. So, I, oh after, no! Absolutely. After about after about three seasons, after about four seasons, I think you know we'll check in again and, and see what you what you think of it. Because I think then when you see it as a greater as a, as a in the larger picture, I think you right. see it see it a little bit differently. No, it's um, definitely far superior to any of you know a traditional procedural like you know CSI or anything like that. And 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 uh, I absolutely agree with you on that. And I am digging. The fact that, you know, here we start starting into the second season, they've completely changed the location, like you said, and everybody that you had gotten used to being in certain roles was now is spread out and in different places. It's very much like what we're seeing with Walking Dead, you know, where they've, right. you know, everyone's in the prison and working as a group, and now everybody's spread out all over, and you're getting these individual stories, and, um, and that is cool, uh, and it'll be really interesting to see how they pull them back together, you know. Um, and I'm sorry, but his his partner in uh, in Homicide, uh, B- Books or what, what's his name, um, um, the c- cigar smoking guy he yeah, always yeah. goes drinking with. Um, oh, he's just he's just hilarious. Oh yeah, yeah. He's just he's just fantastic. So, but they all are, and they're all. It's funny because they've all gone on to do things. And and just since we're talking about it, because I have it on my notes here to talk about later, but we might as well talk about it now. Is that of course Bob Stuckey's character. Or um, actor that plays Bob Stuckey, um, Lawrence and, Gilliard Jr. Yes, he it, obviously plays a big role in The Wire. Um, D'Angelo Barksdale, and then yeah, and um, as well as Tyrese. Although I have not met his character, he not has yet. not gone into the show yet. Right, yep. but I know that he's coming. I would love. I mean, it's funny. I posted an article. Bunk. That's I don't know his if name. You, bunk. What bunk? bunk? Bunk. That's right. Bunk. Um, I posted an article on the Biter's Facebook page about um, about an interview with uh, um, where the heck is my notes here um, with Gillian, a, a Gillian who plays Bob Stuckey, uh, uh, and how he got chosen. And I guess they, you know, they they had said, I guess Gimple had said, we're not going to put any more people from the wire because I guess Kirkman. He's got this love for the wire, you know, like okay. so many people have, and he's just trying to get as many people from the wire as he can. Uh-huh. And Gillian, I, I guess uh, Gimple was like, you know, that's it. After Tyrese, we're, we're not putting any more because everybody's going to think it's the wire, you know. <laughs> so then they then they 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 uh, did the the casting call for Bob, and they ended up going with him. But um, I would love to see the, the the guy that plays Jimmy McNulty. I guess his name is 
was Dominic West. Yeah. Um, and I didn't know this. He's an English actor. Oh, yeah. What the heck? So many English actors are coming over here, <laughs> like dominating our TV and movies yeah. now, you know? Uh, but Dominic he's, West he's was awesome. On, he, was in, uh, he was in 300. He was. Uh, oh, was he? Yeah. He's, well, he's been in a lot of stuff, but yeah, he was in 300. What um, else has but, he been in? Uh, I, I, or send me an email at some point because I'd love to follow up and see other stuff because I, I just think he's great. His McNulty, yeah, McNulty's a great character. So you saw the one episode uh, where they're they're looking into D'Angelo Barksdale, the, the the crime that he got arrested for, or no, no, an, an unsolved crime. They're trying to link to him. That scene with him and Bunk. Yes, and the, yes, and, yes. And all they do is just say. I had seen that. That was the only thing I had actually seen on YouTube. So I love that, that scene. On. That's a great scene where they 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 do the entire scene and only say the f word through the whole thing in order to. Com- but you completely can see the communication and understand the communication. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it is. It, it's fantastic. And there's been a couple of other, uh, of, of interesting scenes that they've done like that too, that, um, that were awesome. So yeah. Anyway, great show to our listeners. Uh, if you have the chance, I watch it on, uh, HBO go cause we have HBO. So HBO go is awesome. You, you can, it's an app. Basically you can put on your iPad, you can put it on, I watch it on my Xbox, believe it or not. And, um, it, it allows you to stream the entire, HBO inventory of movies and videos or movies and series um, and specials and documentaries and everything. It's just, it's the bomb. If you got HBO, you definitely want to download that. It doesn't cost anything. And um, you can watch all this stuff uh, commercial free. It's great. So, and, and, you know, right into uh, to Facebook, because as you can see, Kirk is, Kirk just caught up with loss. He's just getting caught up with, <laughs> with the wire. So he's going backwards in time. So That's let's right. find some nineties shows that he might not have seen. He'll catch That's up on those. I would probably recommend, you know, eighties, a team, you know, that might be a I, good one too. And you'll I catch actually up. from the future. And there was a <laughs> up and sent me back here. So <laughs> it's actually I'm from 1977. But uh, yeah, seriously, you would think that Kirk like took an entire decade of TV off. Like, <laughs> I got to catch up, man. <laughs> hey, I want to remind people to follow our live tweeting of Walking Dead uh, at Batman uh, at Batman KM or at Jay Marzik um, and at Biters Podcast. Um, we do that uh, from nine to ten Eastern time. Um, we live tweet the show, and uh, it's a lot of get a lot of laughs that way, boy. And it's a lot of fun. <laughs> I want you guys to join in on that. And uh, make sure to remember to, uh, to write us at biterspodcast at gmail.com or post comments on the Facebook page, and uh, we'll be sure to read them on the, sh- on the show. In fact, uh, I think, Jeff, you've got some, a recent comment we had. Yeah, so, uh, this, so Ash Bulla, uh, he uh, wrote in and said that uh, – I-, I love how he, he kind of dangled. He was like, oh, I met Chandler Riggs and uh, – and, uh, oh, who's the girl? Uh, Emily Kinney. I, I, I met them. It was like a short. And I was like, what? You just can't throw it out there like that. More. <laughs> Give me details. We so need he details. He, he said he was at a uh, horror mania on Friday and he saw them there. And uh, I think Herschel, he said, was there as well. And so he said that, you know, if you want to meet these people, go to horror. Con- as he says, go to horror conventions, bro. <laughs> so uh, well, thanks, Ash, for writing in. And it's uh, good advice. And everybody should read that because. Uh, yeah, and if and if well, somebody gets a yeah, if somebody gets a line on, or they they know like there's going to be because these conventions are man, there's a convention everywhere and oh, guest yeah. appearances all the time. You know, post on the Facebook site where um where the uh, or give us a shout out on the on the you know at at Biters Podcast on Twitter, um you know where there's going to be a show uh, a convention somewhere and where there's going to be. Uh, you know, if one, somebody from The Walking Dead is going to be yeah. making an appearance. You know, maybe we should try we, – we could do a little research before each episode too. And we could make that a little segment where we could say, you know, in, in Arkansas or in, you know, in Michigan this weekend or whatever. You know, we might be able to find out relatively easily and be able to let people know about that. So. And, you know, if, if you're going to meet these people, we want proof. So uh, Yeah, get a know, picture. 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 Put it up online. Definitely put it at the Facebook page, man. We want to see. So thanks, Ash, for writing in. All right. All right. Alone, baby. Um, I'm giving it four and a half headshots. Just holy like- cow. Is that what you gave last week, too? <laughs> yep. <laughs> wow. I loved it. Okay. What about you? What are you giving it? I'm giving it three. Okay. All right. So well, that's what, so- better, is that better than last week for you? Uh, it's, it's about the same. It's about the same. About the same. I, think I, I think I went with three last week, too. All right. Actually, no. I think last week was three and a half. All right. So what's your good? 
Oh my gosh. Um, you know, I, I just, I, I just loved the episode altogether. I mean, I'm, I'm loving the structure, the way they're doing, they're, they're telling the story right now with the individual episodes about different groups. Um, I loved how this mess, the message of this one was, you know, together there's hope alone, there's nothing but despair. Um, I, the, the quiet opening was fantastic. Again, they've, they're just getting this thing down to a science where it's becoming their trademark in a lot of ways, and right. and I love that. Um, you know, this in fact may be my best yet. Uh, my favorite yet. The shot of Bob on top of the truck was unbelievable with the dead leaves. You know, the way he's just in such despair and wandering, you know, the drunk tank that he makes for himself. <laughs> the drunk yeah. cell, that was unbelievable. It just showed how addicted and depressed this guy was. Um, I just, I, I thought that whole opening was, was fantastic. Um, I think I, I read somewhere that the music that played during that was by season, I think it was season nine, American Idol... I don't know if it was winner or American Idol contestant. Really? Had done that song. Yeah. Oh, you have to dig that, dig that up and post it on Facebook because I didn't hear anything about that, and uh, it was it was great music. Um, I think that they've just transformed Bob in this season. You know, or uh, the second half of the season. Um, I mean, they've started giving us some some great background on him. Um, they're writing him better. Um, they're really allowing you know Lawrence Gillard. Is it pronounced Gillard? I thought it was Gilliard. Gilliard. Yeah, I think you're right because there's another I after the L's. Yeah, Gilliard Jr., uh, who plays Bob, to really start to act. And, and I'm so liking his character now. You know, I mean, he was just kind of this guy before that you didn't, you know, you thought he was kind of a loose cannon. You didn't know what was going on with him. You knew there was the alcohol. He just seemed like uh, he was going to be nothing but trouble. And it just, um, I mean, they've really transformed him. And, and, I, and, uh, and I just, I, I'm really digging his character now a lot. Um, I loved how, you know, he's just so anti-loneliness now. And you get it, you know, with that opening, it just, without any words or, again, overuse of dialogue, they were able to really show on a physical level, on a gut level, you know, where this guy had come from and why he's <clears throat> so now, at this point, attached to being with people. You know, right. why he, you know, what he realizes how important it is. And, uh... Um, to the point, you know, and I just thought the whole thing, scene too with him and, and Sasha where he gives her the kiss and heads off and, you know, it was like he wasn't abandoning her, you know, it, he, she was choosing to abandon them, you know, right. and um, that was just, I thought that was really cool. Um, I love the two different story arcs, how they mirrored each other. I mean, um, you got the Daryl and Beth and you got the Bob, Maggie and Sasha and Bob's opening, you know, um, shows how as I already talked about, being alone in, is, in this world is just so horrible. And and then the Maggie and Bob and Sasha group get torn apart through the episode and ultimately each is alone. But by the end, they've realized how important it is not to be alone and that, and that, that they've come back together. In contrast or mirror, you know, you got Daryl and Bath who last episode had, you know, kind of gone through all that and come back together. They they start off the episode really in tune with each other and together and there's a, they find this place and the piggyback rides and there are good people and you know the you know, they playing piano and having food and maybe we can make it work and there's all this hope and with the, the, the togetherness, but then of course that storyline ends with them being ripped apart and of course, you know, uh Daryl is just completely crushed by it and, you know, realizes, uh, you know, he's in utter despair, which is kind of the opposite of what we see happening with the other story arc. So um, how they left Daryl with that, you know, with that group of hunters or bowmen uh, was, was awesome. It's like, you know, the question is, I guess, you know, is he going to completely snap after having lost Beth opened up and put his heart out there, you know, and kind of taken a risk and now gotten it chopped off again you know, and will he go completely dark? I saw a lot of like comparisons to like Anakin Skywalker, you know what I mean? And he was like kind of with those guys when they're like, you know, taking him in, he's almost kind of like gone over to the dark side. Or is he just playing, you know, um, you know, playing along in order to survive, which is what Daryl does best. Well, I, mean, well, I hope so. Well, he, he kind of has no choice. I mean, right. you've got exactly. five guns on you. It's, it, that's not a time to go. Uh, right. No, he's smart. He's smart. Listen, I mean, Beth said it. Beth, she said, you know, you're going to be the last man standing. You know, I mean, he's smart. He's a survival. He knows, you know, he knows when his odds are against him. He's, he had to go with him. I agree with you. But from a storyline, it, it kind of, and knowing where he was at, sitting down in the middle of that crossroads, which, you know, was a physical kind of metaphor for what he was, you know, and, and just being crushed to the point where he just can't move on forward anymore. 
and then he's taken in by these bad guys it's you know has he you know has is he going to end up going bad again or is he you know is he just playing along to survive i liked that go ahead well you were going to say something else i can tell <laughs> no I, well i just i just did uh i did uh I just think that it's, it's, I don't know. Like I get the whole, I, I thought him sitting at the crossroads was, you know, it reminded me of uh castaway at the end, you know, when Tom Hanks is standing at the crossroads, right. it's just, I hate those metaphors. Cause it's, it's, it's like getting bludgeoned over the head is so like, pow, you know, <laughs> in your, but he has no choice. I mean, yes, the question is going to be, is he going to fall in with these guys and be a part of them? You know, but he's in a situation where clearly he's not going to, you know, he's not going to do anything to jeopardize his own life. I mean, that's that's just stupid, especially with Beth that's out there. And but so. we also know I agree with you. I agree with you. But we also know that, you know, that's only been a short period of his life. The majority of his life, he's been following bad guys like his brother for years. And, you know, um, the question is, you know, what will happen here, you know? Right. And, and also what's going to happen to him? I mean, are they, are they really going to take him in or are they just, you know, setting him up for, for their own? I think he's got to prove himself. I think there's going to be, you know, it's going to be like, Hey, take that guy out or, you know, go do something. You know, he's going to have to do a bad deed to prove that he's one of them or. Lauren Cohen, um, was, uh who plays Maggie was interviewed in the Hollywood reporter I saw. And um, she had uh, a couple things to say about the Beth thing. Um, she said that this is going to be a really good point of suspe- uh, suspicion for a while. There's not going to be a quick resolve to that situation. It's getting very scary. And then she also said about Daryl, um, this whole situation that Daryl has found himself in gets really scary. We should be pretty worried about everyone. Of course that doesn't, you know, doesn't tell us anything, but um, right. <laughs> but it's just interesting to hear. Um, I'm worried that um, Daryl may end up filling the Dale role in the comic when it comes to the uh, Hunter storyline in the comic. Um, without trying to give any spoilers away, for those of you who are read the comic, you'll know what I'm talking about. For you that haven't, uh, um, hopefully that didn't spoil anything. But uh, I think there's a good chance of that. Um, you think that's a possibility or not? I don't. No, you don't I think, think that's I what's think, going on here. I think there are. I think there are four bulletproof characters on this <laughs> on this show. Okay, Rick, <laughs> Carl, Michonne, and uh, Daryl. Yeah. Um, I I wonder how many women were swooning or penning uh, hate mail to Emily Kinney when she did the p- piggyback ride on his back. <laughs> I know. You know? And, uh, or, or holding hands with them. Oh man. You just know the stalkers just like just fell out of the woodwork. Oh right yeah, <laughs> absolutely. No, but I, I think they're I, I think they're um, But you see they could they could do it and not have it end the way it did in the comic. You follow me? Again, yeah. trying not to be spoil yeah. trying to be spoil proof, but they could do a a lot of that right up, you know, to the point in, in the comic where it, how the you know, and not have it end that way. No, I think that I, I think that this We'll get into my thoughts in a couple okay. minutes, but I think that my I think that Beth is going to play the part. Well, in the, in the comic, that, I think that that's all of this. That, I think that all of this setup here that we've you know kind of been and I don't really call her Beth anymore. I call her Princess Sunshine Care Bear because <laughs> she just. <laughs> oh, that's a great one. That's, I want to. I want to. That one needs to like be. Maybe I'll put that in some art. You know, I'll do a picture of <laughs> Beth, Princess oh my Sunshine. God. Dude, she's on the screen for like five seconds, and and I I have to check myself for diabetes. I mean, there's like <laughs> like just sugar just falls off of her. I'm like, oh my god. But I think that I think that the reason why there's um, she, you know, she basically had no character. She basically had nothing um, up until you know the past couple episodes, right. or up until this part of the season. Right. And I think that what they're doing is they're trying to build her, build her up, and build her as to like. Uh, have us care about her, well, make her, do- make her an important part so that right. they can take her away somewhere down. Oh, the I end. agree. But I think they're doing that with everybody. I mean, I think the whole, the whole point of the second half of the season has been to get an opportunity to take all the characters, main characters that haven't been fleshed out and add some meat to their bones. Sasha, Bob, um, as we'll see, hopefully next week, Tyrese, um, Beth, 
even Daryl, who you know has been around from the beginning, and but has not had- so much. Of, you, that's true, but not so much of a spotlight as as it's been on Beth. There's been a lot more. There's been a lot more focus on Beth. Yeah, and it's and, and she's been clearly she's been integral to to bring in a human side to Daryl. Right, but there's been a lot more on her. I'm telling you, everybody listening, right here. I'm putting it down right here. I got ten bucks. <laughs> Beth dies. <laughs> I think okay? that's a possibility, and I don't think it's going to happen at the end of the season because we got three episodes to go, and I think it would be a rush to do it by the end of the season. But next year, she's toast. Well, I don't know. I I think if they're gonna, I think you there will be. I I would predict that there'll be a major cast. Uh, loss this season. I mean, they're not going to go the whole rest of the season without at least one. I mean, we lost Herschel at midseason. I'm guessing we're going to lose somebody important at the end. I'm willing. I th- I think I'm going to go out and say I think it'll be Carol. But um, but uh, we'll we'll. That's my just my guess. Here here I th- I know where you're going with Beth uh, and and of course the kidnapping and everything. But I have a, another read on that. I'm assuming okay. you're you're insinuating what I thought about. Uh, yes. Daryl, right? That the yeah. that that's actually Beth in that role. I think that I think what we're seeing with the Beth storyline is the introduction of Gabriel. Now Gabriel's a character from the comic who's a, a priest, and they um, he arrives in the comic at the same time as Abraham, Team Abraham, and I was hoping they would bring him in, um, and. Um, you know, it just seems like, you know, this, the idea that they've got this morgue that's being maintained and kept, um, I think that would be, you know, very um, uh, consistent with, you know, a, a priest that may live there or a minister and who's, you know, trying to maintain and hold on to, um, you know, what, what was in the past and the way that we did things. And then the car that you see taking off um, with her in it has a big cross in the rear, in the rear window. I don't know if you saw that. It's a black car. I don't know if it's a hearse or not, but it has a big bl- white cross. It wasn't a hearse. No, it wasn't a hearse, but it had a. It was a black car, and it had a big white cross in the rear in the rear window. And um, that's when I said he probably just grabbed her to try and save her from the horde of zombies and get out of there. Um, that's my guess, and that's I think how we're going to get introduced to Gabriel. Um, but I could be wrong. Could be what you're thinking with the the hunter storyline. You don't think that that was a, you don't think that that was a, a, a honey trap set for for that those were the hunters in the car and that they that it's that possible. Was a- I mean, it could be, and I think you know they're they're playing on us. You know, they want us t- they want us to think that that's a really really bad scary thing happening. But um, my guess is it, it it's a, it's all part of the introduction of Gabriel. But I uh, wouldn't be. Uh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if three episodes to go in the season, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see Beth the rest of the season. The next, next season when, you know, there's the big, yeah, there's like the big Beth and she'll be a a big thing then. She's still going to (laughs) die. And I'm still going to collect 10 bucks. I'm sorry, but they're all going to die except (laughs) Daryl. Right. right. Um, And then uh, let's see. The only other thing um, I I really like, liked Sasha again in, in this episode um, I liked how, how she played, you know, the, you could see the inner turmoil about her, her fear that Therese is dead and her, un, you know, her unwillingness to want to face that <clears throat> and her wanting to deal with that fear and anxiety by just moving on and forgetting about him and just going on starting a new life instead of, you know, trying to continue to look or to go to Terminus and find out. And, um, and I, I was pretty convinced that, that, scene where she goes up into the big room in the building that the way it was playing, she would have changed her mind. And, and I mean, she was like inches away from grabbing her stuff and saying, screw this and running out to, to, to get Bob. And then, you know, we saw what happened with Maggie. So, but I just thought that that was all well done. So those, that, that was all my good. Um, okay. What, what was good? My, for- my good was, um, uh, well, I, I, the opening with Bob. So what they did with, and again, okay, so what they did with Bob in this episode was was fantastic. Really, really enjoyed the character. And it, it, there, it was like a monumental leap forward in the character than what they've done in the prior, prior episodes. There was an episode either, what, last week, two weeks ago, where we saw him and we, we started to see little little glimpses of how good he could be. But I'm also going to say, while he 
did stuff well with the character. I got to give all the credit to uh, Lawrence Gilliard, who he just played him. He, he just played him so well. That opening when he's just by himself. One of my favorite parts of that is the end of that scene. You know, at the end of that, when he's walking down the road and uh, uh, Daryl, Pancho Daryl, and yeah. uh, <laughs> it was great. And Glenn show it was up. Absolutely great. And they give him the three questions, and he answers them. And then, you know, uh, Daryl says, all right, you want to come with us? And he thinks for a, uh, Bob thinks for a second. He's like, yeah, okay. And Daryl says, don't you have any questions for us? And Bob said, no, it just doesn't matter. You know, it's just, <laughs> right. I don't care. And it was, it was just awesome. And, and just how well he played it. His, anything, anything beats being like this is essentially absolutely, what yeah. Absolutely. You know, and, and. You know, I I I loved how he kept kind of you know working Sasha, and uh, yeah, you, know, you knew that hookup was was imminent, and I didn't mind that one as so much as the other imminent one that I'll talk about that that just made me want to <laughs> yak, yeah. So, but it was funny because Bob will get turned down. You know, it'd be like when he gets shot, and he's and he's like, "Ow!" He's like, "No, I said, ow." You know, the, the, you know, when he, she's he, hugging him. Or yeah. when she's holding him, right, yeah, right. He's like, all he said was, ow, I didn't say stop. Right. And she just kind of <laughs> looked at him great. like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, no, I didn't say stop. And and nothing comes of it. But he doesn't get, like, petulant or like, oh, she doesn't love me. You know, he's just he's just like, whatever. And he's, I, I, I just loved him. I just, yeah, I agree. I agree 100%. I think he hey, did what, a fantastic job. A, a little bit of trivia here about uh, Lawrence Gilliard. Um, he, uh, he actually went to Juilliard as a clarinet major. Wow. Yeah. And then he said, he said somewhere between the time he started and the time he stopped, he just stopped playing. Then he just kind of fell out of love with it. Um, I love the fog scene. Wait a minute. Before you get to the fog scene, I just wanted to add, too, that um, I, I, the three questions, when that was introduced, what, last season? Way yeah. back? I don't know when. It seemed a little hokey. The way when it was introduced, I think Rick introduced it or whatever. I guess it was right. the phone call people asked him. Right. And then he then turned around and made that their their you know review process. Right. I, I love that now. I, I mean it was just and maybe it was just because of the way Daryl delivered it, you know, it was much better I, than the way Rick delivered it. But yeah, absolutely. I and it, it, exactly. It just came out much more natural. And it but it's just, yeah, and, just, and it really does cut to the bone. I mean it yeah. really does cut to the the, the, the decision making process in this world, you know. I mean, have you killed zombies? Have you killed people? And if you have, why? I mean that really that because everybody has to do all of that, but it's the context of it that, that matters. And so. I love that I love that an answer to why is because she asked me to. Yeah. That's enough. Not yeah. like, you know, who's she yep. and, and yep. how'd you do it? Exactly. Um, so when we come back into the act one, uh, we've got, um, you know, we've got the fog scene with them all standing back to back to back right. and fighting the zombies, which I thought was cool. Very you cool. know, one of the things that that's kind of missing, and I've talked about this a couple episodes is that the zombies are kind of, I don't know, they're kind of laughable at this point. I, I there's not a whole lot of horror that in this, in this show. And, uh, you know, like I said, I don't understand why people run anymore. You can just walk fast and get ahead of them. And but this was, you know, fog descending. We can't. We have no sight lines. We can't see anything. And you just all of a sudden they just come out of the mist, dude. All right, that, that's kind of spooky, scary. You yeah. Know? And that was. Yeah. Um, uh, I and also, it was also scary to hear that they had done it uh, many times before. That this yeah. was their pro, and that they came close to almost losing him. In that last one, and here they are saying, "Well, maybe we should keep doing this and just stick with our plan." And even yeah. I was like, "Dude, you have been lucky. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's exactly. time to move on." Um, I liked the uh, and then the the other two things I liked is I liked the uh, I liked the ending. I liked the uh, Daryl g- getting. Well, I, I liked you know Beth being taken away and i love reading some of these things online where everybody's like oh she took the car and she drove away no she didn't drive she got kidnapped for crying out loud. right if she took the car why would she leave her bag exactly (laughs) um so uh so i like that because now that adds an element of you know again something that's been missing here it's like an element of suspense and it's it's a driver a motivation um instead of just kind of wandering from here to there and then daryl with this group and you know who is this group? We we know who the group is. We because we saw them a couple episodes ago. Um, 
And, you know, that black guy is, is in that group, and he's the dude who saw Rick under the bed before he passed out. So oh, was he there? Yeah, he's the okay. one. Yeah, he's, I didn't so the, see him there. I, I don't know if you want to read into it metaphorically or not, but he was, he was the right hand at the right-hand side of Joe. So whether he's Joe's right-hand man, I don't know. Right, right. And I think the guy with the bow <laughs> is... You know it's a tough job when you're the right-hand man and you get choked out for, for wanting to lie <laughs> in the bed. <laughs> and I think the dude who was lying on the bed is the dude with the crossbow. Okay. So that's oh, my, yeah. Um. So I like that because it, it, it that you know the it, it, it. Do you think they're the a, hunters? Do you think they're the hunters, or do you think no. that no? You think they're just another group of bad guys? Yeah, okay. I don't think they're the hunters. Do um, you think he's Nagin? You know, I, no, I don't. Okay. Um, because I don't because like like Robert Kirkman said in an interview somewhere, uh, there needs to be time between yeah. the governor and Negan. You can't just bring them yeah. in. So, you know, he may not be named Negan as such right now, but I still think that it's when that guy appears, it's especially with Lucille. Yeah, we're gonna know, know. We're it, gonna, you're know. gonna know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, um, true. that's true. Uh, I like I loved uh, Joe's there were a couple of good really good, funny quotes in here. One is uh you know when they were in the funeral home and uh Daryl says peanut butter and jelly Diet soda and pig's feet. That's a white trash brunch there. That was awesome. <laughs> that, was, that was great. He's had some great ones. Like in the, the week before, it was the, uh, the, dumpster, the dumpster chair or the dumpster lounge chair, whatever. There was, uh, where he's, that's where he's always sat and his, his dad oh, yeah, yeah, describing yeah. his apartment. His dad had the dumpster chair. And then this week, it's the white, white trash brunch. <laughs> there were some great tweets that came out after that. <laughs> And then there's uh, and then there was Joe's quote: "Suicide is stupid. Why hurt yourself when you can hurt other people?" Yeah. So, and, it, and it's funny because either the way, either it's just how I happen to see it, or maybe it's just coincidence. But it, that seemed to just kind of click on a, a light bulb in in Daryl's head. But it was almost like you know the the doorway to the old ways just got reopened. You know, because right. that, that's something that Merle would have said. Exactly. You know, and, and that's what I was saying. You know, I agree. I totally, I think it leaves open what's going to happen to him. Is he going to be so upset from the loss of Beth that he just going to go back to his old ways, you know, or is yeah. this just a maneuver to survive? I hope it's just a maneuver to survive, but. All right. So what did, what was your bad? My bad was, was actually, um, just stupid picky stuff this week. You know, there was no, I have no bad about any of the story or any of the characters or any of the way things were done. I just, um, there was some stupid picky stuff like the zombie blood message on the wall, on the, uh, on the train. Uh, I don't yeah. know what those were transformer boxes, boxes or whatever, yeah. which was smart, cool, bright idea, intelligent, fantastic, right thing to do. Just zombie blood. It's going to wash off in the first rain. So, I mean, they should have done something like, you know, I mean, of course, it's very graphic, you know, obviously made for a zombie kill and, you know, gross and all that kind of stuff. So that was cool. But, you know, she should be scratching that into that thing, you know, that metal plate with, with a big stone or something, you know, I mean, something that's going to be permanent and, and not wash away. Well, we went to commercial break that, that I was like, why is she checking this, this zombie's uterus? What's, yeah. what's that got to do with, <laughs> what is it? <laughs> no, it's a zombie ink pen. <laughs> so, text messaging. Like I would I said, not text- be surprised. I would not be surprised that in a couple of weeks, if Kirkman doesn't launch a line of uh, ink pens that you dip into that are shaped like a zombie, <laughs> 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 you dip in and get the, the ink. Out. Um, I, another one was uh, Maggie hiding with the zombies, waiting for Sasha and Bob. Yeah. That just seemed kind of that seemed kind of crazy. Especially to me. since when the glass breaks, right? And all of a sudden, like, she jolts awake and the zombies come out of her. There was a zombie four feet away from her on the other side of the van right. that suddenly comes out. Wait, wouldn't it have smelled her? Well, you know, did you notice that she had stuff all over her face? And, yeah, uh, but do you think that was enough to I, – I thought of that too. Like, she was wearing zombie blood right. to kind of – I don't know. Well, they, they said that uh, – I saw her on um, uh, walk, Talking Dead afterwards, and she said that there was actually a whole other scene that they shot um, of where she was getting to leave a message uh, and needing the zombie blood or whatever. And uh, I think it was that sequence. And um, she cuts open the zombie, but she hasn't killed it yet or something. And it ends up rolling over on top of her. And all of the guts spill uh. out on top of her. 
and See, they just for needed. time reasons they cut that out. Just so that was I think I think it did yeah I think it was missing a little bit. The whole damn window falls out really yeah. when she just yeah. leans. I mean come on, come on yeah. what the heck was that? You right. know the whole window the frame she barely the, she <laughs> barely pushed on it too and it just busts out. <laughs> she like blew on it and the whole thing went down. So that that was a little hard. And then where the heck did all those zombies come from? They didn't hear yeah. her entering the building, walking up the same. stairs or yep. anything. They just, all of a sudden, boom, they fly out of the bottom level. You know, where they locked in one room that was, I don't know, that was, that was kind of weak. Um, st- Daryl stupidly whipping open the door, thinking it's the dog and letting the zombie horde in. I mean, this guy is too smart for that. You know what right. I mean? He, he, he could have assumed that it's the dog, but he would have looked out the window. There were glass panels across the top. I you know? think we saw it. Looked at, as yeah, you, there, you yeah. saw the, the bodies, the you know, outside. Yeah, exactly. So that that you know, again, that that was a little hard to swallow. Beth playing the piano. I mean, I can't think of anything louder than that. To you know, except maybe like blasting music on yeah, a piano. No, between stuff. that and her caterwauling. I mean, I mean. <laughs> So that she's, was funny. she's breaking glass, kill you know, scaring cats, and inviting the Walking Dead to, <laughs> to the place. Um, Daryl getting in the coffin. That was funny, but it was like way too obvious of foreshadowing. You know, I mean, that, that was just too over the head for me, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm also, um, I'm starting to have difficulty accepting that Daryl hasn't run out of bows, you know, or arrows, I mean. Oh, yeah. You know, I mean, it's just, it, granted, just, they show him, you know, grabbing one or two back, but, you know, it, uh, he would, you know, he would be out. Um. That that was it for bad. Just little picky things. Um, I pretty much had all those on my list as well. Um, I'm going to start off with. Uh, I'll start off with the. I the whole Maggie, Sasha, and Bob thing. Bob's basically uh, he. I'm going to leave him alone because he was basically. I feel I felt he was on the right side of everything uh, to begin with. So you know, first of all. Uh, it, you go back to the fog area to the fog scene and Maggie's like, I've got to go find Glenn and this is what we got to do. And, and Sasha was like, no, we need to stay together. We can't, you know, split apart. Okay. That's right. And then, uh, and then when they go and they find the terminus sign, there's a flip flop. And then Maggie becomes smart and Sasha becomes dumb because her, her response, her, her reasoning is, well, it's far and we don't know if there, if there are other signs. Wait, what? What else are you going to do? And I get the whole thing about she's scared that, hey, if I get to Terminus and Tyrese isn't there, I have to live up to the fact that he's dead. Okay, well, there's that option or your option, which is basically hang out in the woods or, you know, go find a place to, you know, when she tells when she tells Bob later on down the railway, when she's like, you know, here's here's a here's that building. We can go into the building. Maybe we can grow stuff. Maybe we can find other things. What, you and Bob, just the two of you? Have you guys not learned anything about strength in numbers? <laughs> yeah. you, you're going to do this on your own? I agree with you. I agree with you. But I'm going to play devil's advocate and that that character, unlike Bob and, and uh, Maggie, lived for a while in Woodbury. And right. she knows that these community things can be just as bad, if not worse, than being out on your own. So she has some legitimate apprehension that I was willing to accept as, as realistic um, in, in terms of, of saying, hey, maybe it's not such a great idea to just run off to the first place that's advertising, you know, safety uh, at this point. So. Well, it, you know, the, the, I, I would give you that, except that she's not coming up with any other option except to just sit here on my butt and right. just, you know, kind of survive. Right. If you're right. like, if you if you said, hey, look, I see Terminus and this is a big thing and I, I don't think we should go there. I think we should go to this town over here. And if you want to, you know, if she had a plan, hey, let's, we just move from house to house to house and we go and we find, you know, we find something else. Okay, I get that. But she didn't. She just wanted to, but, and then, so she's dumb there and Maggie's the smart one now. And then, you know, they have their little camp together and, and then Maggie strikes out on her own. Hey, why? What are you doing? <laughs> you know, and Bob's just caught, kind of like caught in the middle, and and trying to keep the the the, the group together. He's trying I, to hang on to his three way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought the I thought, you know, God bless him. I actually kind of you know I, I felt like 
I, I saw some of me. The guy and has Bob. the best setup of any of the groups. I, I, I saw some of me and Bob. You know, as he was trying to work on Sasha and just coming up with nothing. It reminded me of you know my right. dating years, but you know back in college. But like when he was like when they're when they're standing there and you hear the or they're laying there and they they hear the zombie the walker who probably impaled itself and it's yeah, not going that was, anywhere. That was that was disturbing. And he says, uh, he goes, you know, up until now you were I thought you were the toughest, but also the sweetest. It was like, oh, geez, man, don't just. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, it was it, it was kind of it, you let it go because it was Bob, and, and, and right. you know we've already talked about. I, I thought that he, he, the same thing that you said about about Sasha going into the building, and knocking out the the window, and Maggie Land. I really wish they had put that scene in there because then they should have just had really... the whole building collapse. <laughs> <laughs> She pushes out the window of the building. Yeah, falls, the whole it's just, building just collapses. Just her and the staircase flat. and the window are left. <laughs> and and the last scene is Maggie sitting up, going, "Oh shit." <laughs> <laughs> so the but the conversation that 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 Maggie and Sasha then have, you know, down by the down by the the ice cream truck, that was the conversation that should have happened back in the right. first act. And I just right. felt that that whole. What we did with those characters was we went full circle. We ended up right where we started. Yeah, but I think that was the point of the whole thing was that they were together and they were functioning together, but they were really each on their own thing. And it tore them apart. And then there was this realization that they both had, like Bob had had back from the, the opening, that being alone is the worst possible scenario, that they need each other. And it seems Wait. like that's kind of the message of this back half. And, you know? and and that's and that's a message that you need to learn this late in the game after the prison. That's not well, a lesson it, you would have it, learned it a long time ago. It certainly isn't for it certainly isn't for Bob. But it is, and we know, and we see why now. But it is obviously for these two women because they've both just been separated or lost, or dealing with the potential loss of the one thing that was really kind of keeping them tied down to reality and, and hope filled with hope. And that was Therese, her brother and Glenn, her husband. So, okay. So, so again, I've, uh, I've liked Sasha. I've liked Sasha. I thought she was a pretty strong character because she was, I felt that she was drafting off of her, off of Tyrese. Okay. She's drafting off her brother. And, uh, and and so she's a she's a strong uh, character, and I, I saw a little bit of Talking Dead afterwards, and I'm not sure if I was aware of this before, but uh, the actress was saying that uh, Sasha's background is she was a yeah firefighter. firefighter. I yeah. don't know where that came from. I've I don't never remember heard seeing that. that in the show. No, me me either. Okay, so she's a and, and she talked. The By the way, the actress's how- name is Sonequa Martin Green. Oh, she's and man, she's beautiful she too. when she's got yeah when she's like dressed up and got makeup on and everything and looks completely different. Oh wow, totally. Yeah, when she's, when she's not apocalyptic, yeah. So, but she was talking about how hey, being a firefighter, you got to have a strong personality because you got to hump all this gear and you can't look weak in front of all the other guys. And Absolutely. Like uh, and I get that, and and that came out in Sasha. Except this episode, she devolved. Now, if you're with Maggie, one of the things that's that's really good about Maggie's character and possibly pretty, and which is probably really annoying for somebody in her company like Sasha is that Maggie's convinced that Glenn's alive, right? right. She just knows that Glenn's alive. Yeah. She kind of, you know, her confidence wavers. It's, it's not wavers so much as that she's apprehensive when she comes across these, you know, these scenes and, you know, zombies and stuff just because she's, there's a possibility that that might be Glenn there. Right. But she her her belief that Glenn's alive has never wavered. Right. Meanwhile, you've got Sasha, who has seen her brother do great things, has seen her brother keep them alive, and and I get that she she's kind of glasses half empty, you know, that Tyrese might be dead, but some of Maggie should be wearing off on her. Should she should be she should be getting some of that enthusiasm or some of that strength from Maggie and being like, you know what? You're right. There, there is a chance for this because the, the entire 360, the one she of the, does best, at the end, she does at the end. That's the whole point of the story. Well, great, I think. But that, but again, that, that's a conversation that should happen in the beginning. The best metaphor <laughs> that happened in this entire, the best metaphor that happened in this entire episode was when Maggie and after the fog scene pulls out the compass and she goes, uh, yeah, it's broken. <laughs> Pretty much just said this entire episode. <laughs> right. Directionless. <laughs> right, right. So, um, so that's so that was one of the things that that, that annoyed me about okay. uh, about Sasha. Okay. The other big problem I've got is 
Princess Sunshine Care Bear and Daryl. And there's oh my god, what what is there not to what what is there not to like about this? Um <laughs> I like it all. <laughs> so th- first of all, this impending hookup, you know, saved by, you know, the there there was a kiss that was saved by the bell or the noise on the front porch. Right. Um because that was impending, um which would have been uncomfortable. Beth is an idiot. Okay. Why is She's everybody so uncomfortable with the idea of them being not everybody, but so many people are uncomfortable with the idea? Is it just the age thing? I think it's the age thing. Yeah. Um. But okay. So in the beginning, when she said, uh, "Oh man," I had a great example too. So in the beginning, when when he's like showing her how to how to hunt, right, or to, how to track, and and she says. Uh, I love how she's, he's like, oh, I see tracks. And he's like, well, what do they look like? You, she's like, is it a zombie? He's like, or is it a walker? And he's like, well, you tell me. And she goes, oh, it's a zigzag pattern. Yeah, it's a walker. Well, no kidding. What else would it be? You know? <laughs> but did you hear his comment? He goes, eh, or drunk. drunk. <laughs> right. <laughs> so she, um, uh, okay. So her whole thing about, uh, and I get what her purpose is, and I've already said that I think that the, why there's so much focus on her is because they're building her up because they're going to take her away from us at some point down the line. I, I get the whole point of what she's trying to do with Daryl. She's trying to humanize him, but in her humanizing him, um, uh, she's actually making him a weaker character. Case in point, the first alarm that, that went off that should have gone off in his head, if Daryl was thinking, the first alarm that should have gone off in his head was when they got to the cupboard and he goes, wait. wait there's no dust on any of this stuff. And then he says, wait, somebody lives here. Somebody's been tending to this place. And then he was just kind of like, huh, oh, pig's feet. And then, you know, kind of like forgot about it. Old Daryl, that alarm still would have been ringing. Hey, wait, 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 we're in this place. And you know how they're wary around other people. Yeah. And you're, you're in somebody else's place. Yeah. So that alarm didn't go off in his head. The second alarm was, oh, no, no. The first alarm was when they got to the house and he looked around. He's like, Someone's been tending to this place. This place right. is too nice. That's the first one. The food right. was the second one. Right. The third one was the dog appearing. The dog appearing around lunchtime. Okay. Clearly, there's a routine that goes on in this house. That alarm should have gone off in his head. The whole leaving a note thing with, with you know, where he was like, he should have shut that down immediately. And then, you know, again, going along with the theme of people doing dumb things, when the zo- first of all, you already said, going to the door and, you know, not checking first. When, as soon as he said, as, as soon as it, you hear the noise at the front, and he's like, oh, I'm, you know, convince the dog. He says something about the dog. You just knew it was going to go bad. Why does he lead them down the stairs into a room that doesn't have an exit? <laughs> why, why? Why? So, again, just... That, that was just, you know, a dumb, something dumb. Uh, what's, what's annoying about this, I was really uncomfortable in that scene. Most uncomfortable I've been in this entire scene. And we talked about her singing and, you know, raising the dead just alone with that. But the most uncomfortable I've, I've been this episode was the two of them sitting at the table. And she's like, oh, you do believe in good people. Um, you know, what made, what made you change your mind? He was like, well, you know. And... Which is a total, he played, Norman Reedus played totally perfect. Like, he wouldn't come out and be like, well, you did, baby. You know, he wouldn't right. be like, sweet talker. He'd be like, well, you know. And she was like, no, I don't know. Say it. And, you know, and he's like, well, you know. Ugh. And so uncomfortable. And then when they got eyes, goo goo eyes kind of looking at each other, I was like, don't do it. But what I think, what should be going on here is that, is that if she's trying to humanize him, he needs to be wearing off on her as well. She's not changing at all. She's still this. She's still Princess Sunshine, and everything is is great, and there's hope and all this stuff. But he needs to he needs to be wearing off on her and raising, you know, making her see that, uh, you know, the world isn't a, as a bright place. I think this kidnapping, which we know that's what it is. I hope it's the hunters because this is going to jade. This should jade her a little bit and go, Holy crap, Daryl, you were right. I need to, you know, be a little bit more defensive. Well, she and- keeps talking about how there's good people. You know, there's still good people. There's still good people trying to get him convinced that that's true. And because like the first thing he says is she says, well, maybe somebody's there when he's piggyback riding her. And, and right. he says, yeah, and if there is, I'll take care of it. 
Right. In other words, you know, he just sees everybody other than his immediate family <laughs> as a threat. And, right, exactly. Uh, but, okay, so that's how he was. What, if there's somebody there, I'll take care of it. Right. And then they did a rapid downshift the rest of the episode where he was like, you know what? We could make this work. Why do we have to, you know, run away? This could be, holy crap, you're a married couple. So I, I, did, I didn't. The fact that she's been taken and my guess is that we won't see her for the rest of the season makes me very happy. <laughs> um. Well, you know, I, I thought, I think, I disagree. I thought that was a great sequence. And I think that um, uh, it showed that when you start to open up, when you start to care about people, when you start to let people in, you do make yourself vulnerable and you do weaken perhaps a little bit your ability to be a narrow focused survivalist. And the the result is is that it becomes life the life becomes more dangerous, but it becomes also maybe more worth living. And I think that's kind of the message too, you know, which is being just a survivalist and only concerned with, you know, um keeping all the, the bad guys killed and, you know, looking out every corner always is not much of a life to live. Um and uh, you know, so that's what I think the message was. So well, there's also the other thing too is that for pretty much for both groups, but especially for Daryl and Beth, is that they've pretty much just written off everybody else. Like there's no, you there's know, no talk the- about hey, I wonder if maybe they made it out or yeah. there's, there's just none of it. It's just it's just you and me, babe, and you know we're gonna make this work. Of, I, th- I think that I agree with you, and I think that that's that's would be probably one of my one criticisms of the season, the second half of the season, is that. Um, that they have all kind of given up with the exception of Maggie who of right. course is now dragged Bob and, and Sha, uh, uh, Sasha back into the, into that way of thinking that there's possibility of and hope, but even, you know, Rick and, and Michonne and Carl, when they head off towards Terminus, well, no, you know what? Glenn is also, but Glenn is not, he doesn't really care if anybody else is alive except Maggie. Right. right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So he's not thinking, he's probably assuming everyone else is dead, but he's, he's not going to let himself think that Maggie's dead until he, you know, has spent the rest of his life looking for her. But, um, but overall, I agree with you. I, I'm surprised that there isn't more of, um, because it's also we're not talking about a huge radius here. I mean, right. granted, they all went off. They all went off, and we talked about this before. They all went off in relatively the same direction, with the exception of Rick and Carl, and um, and maybe Michonne. And um, you know, it, it it doesn't make sense that they wouldn't you know run into each other. Or of course, that circle is expanding as each episode goes on and each as time moes on, but. Um, it, does, it does seem like they would run into each other. Oh, another uh, that made me just think of another little picky thing about um, stupid thing. That road that they had Bob on in the beginning, they have used that road so many times. <laughs> I mean, it's so obviously the same freaking road. It's the road most traveled. Yeah, amen. So, um, I was surprised at the end when they showed uh, when they showed uh, uh, Glenn. Uh, looking at Terminus, that they didn't pan around, and you, that you'd see Abraham and and all the other, you know, the other three people, yeah, the four people behind him. Um, they just showed him. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, that that probably is a cost thing. Would be my guess. You know, they get paid by the episode. They probably sign on for so many episodes, uh, you know, and then uh, so they, you know, they said, well, here's a chance to, you know. Glenn, where it's Glenn's obviously a full time character, you know who knows what the plan is for the other ones. I don't know, but um, well, he should be able. To, he should probably. I anticipate that Glenn on the rail that he is, he'll probably get to terminus before everybody else because he's the one wearing the skirt, so he's got less, um, you know, restriction <laughs> on his legs. So he'll probably get there. Faster. Yeah, but the high heels slow him down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go on to uh, ugly. All right, so my ugly is a good ugly, and my ugly is the um, is the um, the ending with the or the before the ending the the disappearance of uh, of Beth. The more I thought about that scene, the more I thought about the uh, you know funeral home with the 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 house that was maintained and the food that was there. Um, you know, how did all those zombies? They did trip the alarm, you know, the the little alarm thing getting up to the because you heard the rattle and clank and right. stuff. But I, I don't know. 
it seemed to me like that would have been, you know, if we're talking as we are, you know, the possibility of we've been itching to talk about the hunters, right. that, that that was a, you know, possibly a, a, a trap. Um, and especially given that she stepped on a bear trap. Now, she's twisted her ankle before and done, you know, relatively that, yeah. dumb things. Oh, that's a great point. The That'd trap be, is the meta- about that. Yeah, yeah, the trap is the is the foreshadowing to what's ahead. It's a trap. Yeah. So uh, that's what I'm thinking. I miss the the That's the, good. That's a really good observation. Because okay. it's too random. It's just too random to just be there. Well, know? and also not yeah, exactly. And also not just the idea that oh, hey, there's hunters out here. Um, but yes, a metaphor for the fact yeah. that you're walking into a trap. So I want to believe that it's, I want to believe that it's the hunters and, um, and you might be right. And maybe they're, maybe the whole Gabriel aspect is just a, they're trying to, you know, for those, maybe they're trying to throw you off. Yeah. Yeah. Throw us off that way. Yeah. could be. Yeah. No, that's a really good observation. But I like, I like, like I said, I like the fact that yeah, there's, what the heck is a bear trap being doing out there? You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, exactly. So, um, it, I like the fact that it gives, you know, for for me, there was no momentum to this episode. I mean, peop, they, we already talked about how the the Barksdale group kind of went into. <laughs> I was thinking it was D'Angelo Barksdale, but <laughs> how they, uh, you know, they kind of went into in, in a full circle. Ended up where, basically where they started from, and then you know, Beth and Daryl were basically they weren't going to. They were just playing house. So I like that there was there's something here. You know, everybody's now on the road to terminus except for you know, except for Daryl, but that little mystery, I like that they added that mystery aspect. Now what happened with Beth? And well, you got me people. thinking now, you got me thinking like then the food thing too. Maybe that wasn't someone's personal stash. Maybe that's there to fatten people up. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's freaking scary. I mean, Oh my gosh. How you get, I mean, peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, and, exactly. And pig's feet. Come on. <laughs> That's weight gain 101 right there. <laughs> oh my gosh. What was the scene in um in uh Silence of the Lambs where the serial killer looks down Put at the lotion them. in the basket? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah, he says, <laughs> he says eat or what do he had some weird thing he said or he get, or you get the hose. Uh, it's just uh anyway, yeah, right. wow. All That's right, so cool. I hadn't thought of that. Well, you completely blew my mind with that. Um all right, is that it for your your? That's your, my ugly, yeah. That's your ugly. I my ugly is good also, and um, I thought we had three of the greatest zombie battles so in in a long time, all in one episode. I mean, I granted the Daryl thing was a little like he didn't realize when he's running down into the stairs that it's like a dead end. They were just down there already, you know. He knows it's down there, but but still, it did give it, it did it did create one of the most amazing fight scenes, zombie fight scenes. And they're, you know, they've never had one. That was like a 12 by 12 or a 10 by 10 room, you know? Yeah. I mean, it was tiny. And he had jammed 15 or 20 zombies in there, you know? And the way he used the, the tables and then getting underneath and that, it was just, it was really cool. And I, I just... Had a glimmer, I had a glimmer of hope because when, when he goes to run out of, thing, out, of the, out of that room, there's a female comes basically falling right. down the stairs and she crashes into the wall. And I was like, oh my God, that's Beth. She's been turned and she's a zombie. <laughs> no. I was denied. So that was awesome. And then um, the, uh, the Bob, Sasha, and Maggie battle in the fog that you talked about, that was one of the creepiest ones we've, we've had ever. And that was really well done. And then I thought the Maggie Sasha battle at the ice cream tuck truck with the no parking sign and the the staff of death that Sasha's wheeling, man. That that was she hops up on the car and they were just going to town. Those two girls were just baseball batting those. those I zombies. just kept thinking of Sasha this episode as like Gandalf with that <laughs> with that staff. You <laughs> shall not pass and then funky, boom. You know? That was awesome. So that was one of my highlights. That's one of my uh, uh, uglies. And then um, also just the 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 story structure of the entire back half of the season. I'm just loving the individual character stories lost in the woods. I think, you know, I thought I was going to dread it to some degree. I did say though, that I'm, I hope that they didn't just zoom them back together and they haven't, they've really worked hard, I think, and used this as an opportunity to develop characters. We're getting so that, you know, I'm obviously you not so much, but I'm, I'm seeing Beth in a whole new light. Um, I'm seeing Daryl in a whole new light. Um, I'm seeing Bob in a whole new light. I'm seeing Sasha in a whole new light. Um, I suspect next week I'm going to see, you know, Tyrese and Carol in a whole new light. And uh, uh, it, we're seeing Michonne in a new light. 
uh, Carl. Um, Rick's pretty much the same. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, just... And, and did you see the previews for next week? Yeah, I did. And not but, only did I watch the previews, but I'll tell you something. Did you, did you watch Talking Dead? I did. I a part a couple minutes of it. Did you see the clip? They they show a clip as opposed to the preview. Oh no. Probably one of the creepiest things I've seen done yet in the, in the Walking Dead. I mean, it was just this the the spookiest, eeriest in the camera shot. There's only two characters in it. They're far away, and it's just I don't want to spoil it if people don't want to hear. But well, it's the just intimation, there's an intimation that that something happens to one of the girls next week. Yeah, I think that's a. But false. we've already said. Yeah, we've we said that's a that's a, a false positive I think the shot cause... of Carol after that shot and is are two different scenes is my guess. You know they have the, the the what you're talking about and she screams out her name and then you see the shot of Carol and it looks like she's like letting go or not going to help or whatever. I think those are from two different segments of the would be my guess. But um, but yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised if next week is all only just. Carol, Tyrese, and the two girls. The way that they did Beth and uh, Daryl. Um, it just seems like that's kind of the structure. It seems like they're going, like they had Rick and Carl and Michonne and they had, um, I guess Beth and Daryl was the only, t- only one that was just two characters or one storyline. But it does seem like they're kind of bouncing through they this. Need to, they need momentum to drive these people forward. There's This was another... You know, two more episodes of no momentum. We all know that they're going to hit terminus in the final, in the finale. See, I'm just not feeling that way. I just, I'm really enjoying learning more about these characters. It, it's more important to me that I now care about Bob in a way that I didn't before than it is to have had, you know, uh, more plot development in terms of getting to terminus or finding out what's there or whatever. Um, to me, that, that, you know, as long as it's done well. You know, this could have been a complete disaster if these these short stories had been, and that's really what I see them as. You know, and I tell you, as a reader of a lot of zombie fiction, um, I, I enjoy both a, a long zombie novel, but then also uh, you know collections of short stories for just this reason, because you get different points of view and different characters. So you like a lot of foreplay, but then you like a lot of just main action as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. <clears throat> so uh, let's see. So some additional thoughts. Um, I talked about uh, The Wire. We talked about uh, Talking Dead. Um, oh, what about, I thought it was interesting that the way Ma- the words Maggie chose when she wrote her note to them about not following her, she said, don't risk your lives. And then she put the number for me. Now, it could be just me reading into it, but the use of number four instead of spelling out four. Fantastic four? No. It rem- <laughs> well, it would be fantastic three with them. Uh, it, it reminds me of the, the, the first person shooter game, Left for Dead, which is left and then the number four and dead because you play the game as there's four people in the game and whatever. But um, I you don't know. What? You know what? Well, you know what? What? Z Girl and the Four Tigers also has a four. You're right, and that's what it was. They were tying into Z Girl. I love it. I love it. They read our comic. <laughs> uh, did you have a zombie of the week? Uh, did I have a zombie of the week? Um, no, but I did have a cadaver of the week. <laughs> I, think- I like the. Uh, I like the, the, the. You know, I, I like the 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 guy on the table there and the. And, uh, that was a tense scene, man. I, I, it was grossed me out when he wiped the makeup off. Yeah. I fully was expecting him to stick his fingers in his mouth. And then the other was that I kept waiting for those things to sit up. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, that, that was intense. But I guess when you've been embalmed, you're pretty much... Uh... <laughs> well, <laughs> well, didn't the Egyptians, didn't the Egyptians take the brain out when they mummified? I think they did. Did they? Yeah. Maybe they had zombies back then. Um, I, I picked the, uh, the zombie, zombie marker pen, uh, as my zombie of the week. Oh. Uh, do you have a kill of the week? Zombie kill of the week? Yeah, it's gotta be, uh, it's gotta be, uh, uh, Maggie with the, uh, <laughs> yeah. no parking sign yeah. as a hatchet. You know? Hey man, I'm on with you. I'm with you on that. Same thing here. Char- yeah, char- character of the week is easily Bob. Easily. Hands down. Totally agree. Absolutely agree. Um, and, uh, t- did you have any news? 
No, it was it was uh, kind of late on news as well. Um, next week's episode is The Grove, and like we said, there's three episodes left in the season. Yeah, it's sad, man. I mean, it's some in some ways it's sad, but I tell you, it's also it's like uh, I'm going to need a break after this. <laughs> so it'll be good. Yeah, you know, it's it's just it's heavy stuff. Yeah, it's it's, it, it's, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how this all coalesces together and when we're going to get the terminus and uh, you know who we're gonna who we're gonna find there. So um, yeah, I get a feeling we're going to have a big. It's going to be a big cliffhanger ending for the season, you know. Yeah, um, I don't know. Well, it's got to be. They've, they, you know, all we've seen so far. You know, there's this hint of terminus, terminus, terminus. So it's it's alluding to the fact that you know the the fact that you're bringing it up so often and that it's going to be like this big thing. Hopefully, it's not going to be like some wah 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 moment at the you know at the end. It's like you know. Well, I would be. I tell you, I don't know about you, but I would be approaching this terminus thing completely differently. I mean, I would be going there. But, well, first of all, like we talked about, I would be focused on trying to regroup, if at all possible. Um, but uh, then the second thing is, if you're going to go to this terminus, I would not be just stomping in thinking, assuming it's all freaking roses and buttercups, you know? Right. I mean, I would be planning out a, a process of, of setting up a perimeter or doing sorties, you know, set up a base that's maybe like a half mile away or a mile away, and then do sorties out and explore and, and right. you know, and get binoculars and check out what's happening and, and watch it for weeks or maybe months and make sure that this isn't, you know, another Woodbury with, you know, crazy loons at the, at the helm, you know? Right. Right. And it'll be interesting to see what happens because they're really setting it up. And uh, I don't know if it's, um, it's all just going to be a big trap. Uh, I kind of hope. I, yeah. I hope not. It, it's, I, I hope it's not. Well, I kind of, you know, I wouldn't be that disappointed in the, in the sense that because then at least it brings them all together, but then they have to fight against this, this, whatever it is, and then they take off for, you know, DC with Abraham. But because uh, I don't want that, I don't, I want them to relocate the show. I mean, I think that's realistic. I think I want, yeah, I, I I'd hate for them to continue the show always in Georgia. Right. I agree. I, I want these guys to have a plan. I want them to sit down and, and say, okay, look, we've been doing this for, you know, let's just call it three years. We've been doing this for three years. This can't be our life. We can't just be running from this point to this point and waiting for somebody to come and attack us. What are we going to do? What, are, what is our plan here? You know, is it, you know, this is when you take a look at, okay, what exists? What do we know about civilization as it stands? We heard Bob talk about how he heard the, the radio communication on the, on the, you know, on the radio. So, okay, wait, is that, is, so is that something that's on a loop? Is it, um, cause you know, there's not electricity anywhere, right? Um, it better so, not be Danielle in French. <laughs> 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 that's a reference to loss people. Oh my gosh. It's the loss. Well, I tweeted during the podcast, during the, the show that it, uh, boy, this the walking dead is feeling like, yeah. lost. You know, so maybe it is a lost. Uh, maybe there's some numbers on that on that terminus. Loop. Terminus is the hatch. There's That's a right. hatch here. <laughs> they're, gonna the they're gonna get there. John. They're gonna get there. John Locke's gonna be running it. <laughs> so all they gotta do is just open the hatch, throw down a flare, and all the zombies go into the hatch, and you know we're we're done. <laughs> all right, I think we've uh, all right. Well, enough. next week uh, we will see you guys back. Don't forget to. Um, Leaves comments on the Facebook page and uh, write us at biterspodcast at gmail.com and uh, um, follow us check. on Twitter at Batman KM, Jay Marzik, and Biters Podcast. And don't forget to uh, check out our sponsors, uh, Entertainment Earth and um, uh, Tweaked Audio. And if you use the if you use Southgate Media on the on the, as a promo code when you order uh, if you order uh, earbuds from Tweaked Audio you get thirty percent off so don't forget that yeah. and make sure you check out other podcasts on Southgate Media site I host another podcast Comrades with Scott Malkus where we talk about the Americans TV show on FX and I think they just started a new one uh, I was on it last week with uh, Lilith is her name. DC Watchtower. Right. She talks about all things uh, DC Comics. And last week we talked about the uh, the Gotham TV show uh, screenplay that I had 
uh, pilot that I had gotten um, we, that we both read and we talked about it. So how's that? Now that's happening, isn't it? Because they're casting for it. Yeah, yeah. So, how does the how does the uh, pilot read? Does it look uh, good? It's I, I wasn't impressed with it. Uh, it seems like a, it's just a police procedural. Mm. And I one of the things I brought up was. So it takes place. It's it's Jim Gordon when he's a detective, uh, and you know he's this hot shot new detective in Gotham City, um, and his you know his partners. He's partnered with Harvey Bullock, and it happens to be right at the time when ten uh, years old, I think he is ten year old Bruce Wayne sees his parents murdered. So uh. I don't understand how someone's going to. And, and it's a procedural. It feels like a procedural. So they're not going to have traditional villains then like choker or penguin or actually they are and they have um but oswald cobblepot is in there but he is a lackey to a mafia queen pin i guess you'd call her uh her name is fish mooney which i think is an awful name who's going to be played by (laughs) jada pinkett smith (laughs) really really so that's awesome so cobblepot is he's in there uh, there is a very young Poison Ivy in there. She's somebody's daughter. Um, there is uh, Renee Montoya, who right, the detective. in the comics right. becomes the, the question. Right. Her partner, um, Crispus Allen, who in the comic books at some point becomes the Spectre, he's in there as well. Uh, Cat, uh, uh, Catwoman is in there, but she's a 14-year-old. Uh, street thief. Yeah. So they've got all these characters uh, in there about the you know the 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 mythology that's in there, but I don't understand. No one's going to show up and watch Gotham because you want to see what kind of a cop Commissioner Gordon becomes. Yeah, I wouldn't think so either. And having watched having watched Southland, where Ben McKenzie was a patrolman, this feels and he's a detective now, but he's Jim Gordon. This feels like Southland, uh, the sequel. Right. So now, are um, you? Do you watch Arrow? I do. Is it good? It is good. It's 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 good. And it com- if you compare the pilots of both of these, Arrow was a much better pilot. I mean, written better, and it's it's. Uh, I mean, you're you're tuning into Arrow because well, it's got Green Arrow, right? And it's got you know, it's got the Suicide Squad in there, and there's you know Deadshot and and right. Slay the Terminator stuff like that. You don't have Batman here. You have right. young Bruce Wayne. And unless if this thing is going to go the distance, I don't see it going. I don't see it. I don't see it lasting. But if you're going to go the distance, say three seasons, four seasons, you're going to have to go at the end of the first season, between first and second season, you got to jump ahead two, three years. Right. Because because at ten years old, Bruce Wayne's got to become thirteen. He's got to be in that costume by the time he's. Oh, they're never going to have him in costume. They say they they say on the last episode of the first season, I guess. He's going to be in costume. Really? You're going to have to do some serious jumping because unless he's wearing like a, you know, a toddler costume. Uh, <laughs> that's that's wild. Yeah. So they're going to actually have Batman, but he'll be like in the background. He'll be some secondary character that you hear about as opposed to or he'll be on the rooftop with Gordon and stuff like that. But everything will be from Gordon's perspective. Well, a lot, the, the gist of it is, is that this is how Bruce Wayne becomes who puts him on the path towards becoming the hero that he becomes is the influence that he's gotten from Jim Gordon. Um, so wow. we'll see. Um, but anyway. Well, so I have to say that, that historically the the DC universe has been translated effectively to TV, horribly to telev- to movies, but uh, they've done a pretty good job. I mean, Smallville was was pretty darn good, and uh, well, Arrow- well, that's like a, okay. So you got Smallville and Arrow, but then you've got uh, Birds of Prey, which was a miss. You've got Wonder Woman, which never saw the light of day. You got yeah. Aquaman, that never saw the light of day. So I don't know. You're running two and three. You're running below fifty percent. So. <laughs> That's true. So they're still casting this, and then we've got the Flash that's coming out. Uh, they've got constant. Now is that going to be out. a series of its own? Yeah, and actually, uh, uh, and actually, this is actually going to be on Fox. Gotham's on Fox, not on the CW. Um, Flash will be on the CW. I saw the Arrow where we first meet Barry. It's Barry uh, Barry Allen, right? Yep. Yep. Um, and uh, I thought that was really good, uh, although I didn't I didn't see this the follow up, which I think it actually introduced the character, the the, the Flash. But I saw a picture of his costume, or at least the helmet, and it yeah. looks good. It looks really good. 
a little steampunky, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I liked it though. It was a little, you know, it was a little different. So, so we'll see. All right, everybody. All right. Check out the other podcasts, and uh, we'll, we'll see you see back you here next week. week. Take care. All right, take care. Bye bye. If you would like to donate to help pay for this and other Southgate Media Group podcasts, simply go to our website, southgatemediagroup.com, and click on the donate button. It can be as little as a dollar or, well, as much as you want. (laughs) Help keep this fun going by supporting this and our other shows. Thanks again for listening, everyone. You're the best fans in the world.